Hello everyone and welcome to another video. We all know and love Roller Coaster Tycoon 1 and 2 as they are today, but it could easily have been very, very different. During development a lot of different ideas were considered and quite a few of those did not make it into the final game. On the original Roller Coaster Tycoon website a document featuring screenshots of early phases of development was posted and I thought it would be interesting to take a closer look at it. That webpage is long gone now but it was reposted on a website called Nick's Corner. That website also seems to be gone now, but I was able to access it via the Wayback Machine and I downloaded the page to preserve it. If you want to see the site for yourself, you can find a download link in the description. We'll go through the images in mostly chronological order, starting with this screenshot from September 1996. At this point, the idea of a theme park simulator did not even exist yet. This is a very early version of Transport Tycoon 2, which is the sequel to Chris Sawyer's Transport Tycoon. He had the idea of making it able to handle very basic roller coasters, so you could sort of call this the birth of Roller Coaster Tycoon. Even though it is very basic, there are some elements from the final game that we can already recognize, such as the zoom button and the general look of the right window. This is because that is just the way that Transport Tycoon looked, and Chris Sawyer kept the same look for Roller Coaster Tycoon. Two weeks later we get the first graphics of roller coaster trains, which look surprisingly similar to the final trains. Sometimes the first idea you have of something is pretty good, while other times it needs to go through a lot of iterations before you find something that works. Here are three more images of coaster trains, all from September and October 1996. On the top right there are a few angles of a more detailed coaster train, which you can also see in the bottom two images. Here we also see the first images of guests. In the first image they are quite a bit more chunky than in the final release, but they seem to have lost that weight in the second image. In the third image we also get to see the first instance of an inverted coaster train, which is also pretty close to how they turned out in the end. The last image also has some early tunnel pieces, which did not make it into the game. In the meantime, Sawyer also started working on the graphics for the tracks. The first image has short bits of track at three different angles, and the idea was that you could connect these to each other directly to make a track. The problem is that this looks pretty terrible, so the idea was abandoned later on in favor of smooth transitions. The second image of track is a vertical loop, which just looks a bit off. You may have noticed that vertical loops aren't circular, but rather their radius gets smaller and smaller the closer you get to the top. This way the amount of force on the guests is kept constant as the train loses speed the higher it gets. This early model was an attempt at an easy way out by having one radius for the entire upper half and one much larger radius for the entire lower half. You can clearly see an angle where the radius suddenly becomes a lot smaller, which doesn't look good. This was later changed to a proper vertical loop as we find it in the game today. In March 1997 the game actually starts to look a lot like Roller Coaster Tycoon. We can see an inverted coaster, a swinging suspended coaster, a wooden coaster and a looping coaster train on a stand up coaster track. There are also several icons that haven't really changed since, such as the landscape tool, the rename button and the delete button. In the right window of the wooden coaster we can also see the first tree, which looks very similar to this tree in the final game. Speaking of trees, Roller Coaster Tycoon has several small ornamental trees, but not all ideas for those made it into the game. Here is an image of a few duck-like ones that weren't included in the end. Now here's an interesting idea that didn't make it into the final game, Rusty Track. 
Over time the paint on your roller coasters would deteriorate making the ride look all rusty and frankly quite ugly. To fix this you would have to pay for a fresh coat of paint. If this was kept in the game I guess that guests would complain about rusty tracks if you waited too long to fix it. I must say I'm kinda glad that this did not make it into the game as it would add a lot of micromanagement into larger parks. This is an image of a 3D model for the steam train locomotive which is very detailed for its size. It is based on a train called the Northern Rock which was built for the Ravenglass and Eskdale Railway in England. It is now May 1997 and Chris Sawyer is working on more different track pieces. Just like the vertical loop took a bit of time to perfect so did the corkscrew. This is an early version of it which wasn't good enough and was later changed to what they look like now. Now this is an interesting image, here we have a circular design for an entrance building. This could have looked really cool but apparently the shape gave too many problems so all entrance buildings ended up being square. Seven months later there was another entrance type that didn't make it into the final game. These look quite a lot like the standard entrance and exit buildings that we have in the game now except that they look much more like a castle. Some things that didn't make it into the game are really random, like this weird panda thing. When Chris Sawyer was asked about it his answer was, uh, I don't know. Well, I don't know either, but this would not have been too much out of place in the panda theme that was released as a DLC later. Earlier we saw that the interface of the game in the first images already looked quite familiar, but that didn't have to be the case as Sawyer actually experimented with quite a few different styles. In April 1997 we see the first example of this with the icons looking like they've been sloppily pinned to a board. Three months later we get a proper screenshot of the game with a similar style. The icons at the top are pinned to a wooden beam and the right windows have a wooden look as well. It's really a shame that this didn't make it into the game as I like it a lot. It has a certain charm to it that the neatness of the final interface doesn't have. Speaking of the final interface, another two months later the game looks extremely similar to what we have today. The windows with the buttons at the top and down the right hand side are now finalized and many of the icons are also the same. Interestingly the text next to the image says that there isn't much in the way of non coaster rides yet despite there clearly being a swan themed boat hire on the water. This and the previous one are also the first screenshots with guests in the park. Some things in the game such as paths have a lot of different types and there are always bound to be some rejected ideas. Here we see a tank vehicle for the car ride on the left and some path types on the right. There undoubtedly are many more of these rejected ideas but most of them are probably lost to history. This is also an interesting screenshot. This car was not meant to be in the park, but rather outside of it, driving on roads or being parked in a car park. The idea of roads outside of the park was not abandoned as you can see it in scenarios like Dinky Park, but they never got cars driving on them. One of the most iconic rides in the game is the spiral slide, but during development non-spiral slides were also considered. This is a section of a multi-lane slide, which would have consisted of several of these sections. It's quite a nice ride type and it's a shame that it didn't make it into the final game. In Rollercoaster Tycoon the staff members never get a break and can be fired or drowned at a moment's notice. In January 1998 Chris Sawyer came up with an idea that would have made their life a little easier. In this screenshot you can see a handyman sitting down and eating lunch. For unknown reasons this never made it into the game, but I like to think that Sawyer just didn't like the idea of staff members getting any breaks whatsoever. 
Speaking of staff, here is a robot entertainer costume which was never finished. It would have been nice to see this, especially if its dance was the robot. Also in January 1998, ducks were added. They don't do much or have an impact on anything, but they do add a nice bit of atmosphere. According to the description of this image, ducks migrate for the winter in Rollercoaster Tycoon and when I quickly tested it I indeed did not see any ducks in October and March. Two months later another really interesting idea that didn't make it into the game was considered, exploding track. The idea was that when two trains collide and explode the track that they are on would be damaged and unusable. Presumably this could have been fixed by simply deleting and rebuilding the track pieces, so it would not have been too difficult to deal with, but it would have been very cool. There have been lots of different scenery items that weren't included in the final game, and here are four of them. In the top left you can see a sort of dome, which was scrapped very early on in its development. Next to it is an early version of a pyramid. The final game does have a pyramid, but it looks very different and frankly a bit more boring. At the bottom we have two townhouses, which are variants on scenery items that did make it into the game. This bus is another very interesting item that was similar to the car that we saw earlier. It was not going to be in your park, but instead it was going to bring guests to your park in certain scenarios. It would have been really nice to get a bus full of people as a reward for a certain goal or something. We are now in August 1998 and we have arrived at the last and perhaps strangest image on the site and it's of a few prototypes of awards. For some reason half of these are beautiful shiny buttocks. I have no idea what the reasoning for this was, but I am glad that they were changed. As you can see, a whole lot of ideas that were considered didn't make it into the game, and the game could have easily been very different from what it eventually became. It's really interesting to see the history and read the stories of development and why certain things weren't included. I'm very thankful that we have this, as for most games you only ever get to see the finished product, which obscures all the work that goes into creating the game. I hope you found this video interesting, and if you did, consider giving this video a like, or leave a comment. You can also subscribe or follow me on Twitch. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next video.